Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it because God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm excited about today. I'm excited about you overcoming in all things and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And uh, God is good. So let's set those thermostats this morning and uh, let's declare with the words of our mouth that all is well. Let's declare out loud that greater is he that is in, in me than, than he that is in the world. And then most importantly, let's declare that God loves me and I know it. That God loves me and I know it. And all day to day, I will live my life with the consciousness of the love of God. That I am conscious of God's love for me. I am conscious that God loves me. And because I am conscious of God's love for me, I'm confident that I am filled with the fullness of God just because I maintain a consciousness of, of the love of God. He loves me. God loves me in all things, in all situations. Now, here's the thing that was mind boggling. I hadn't mentioned this yet, but for God so loved the world. You know, I said something Sunday and I had a chance to back up and think about it again. God so loved the world. So here's the thing that's so exciting is that God loves the whole world and he made his mind up to love the whole world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever would believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But so check this out. So God loves the whole world and prayerfully that love that God has will draw people to believe. Amen. So when we walk in love, we literally show who God is uh, with people who don't know him. Amen. So praise God. Welcome today. This is an amazing Tuesday and you're not going to let nothing get you down. Glory be to God. Nothing gets you down today. And so we send blessings out to you. Where you where you logging in from? Who's in the house this morning? Who's in the house? That I would love for Kaj Park to just show up right now and say, the international city is in the house, Pastor. Praise God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we send blessings to all of you today. Uh, San Antonio, uh, Seattle, Washington, Virginia is in the house. Tulsa, Oklahoma, Kalapa, my God, in the house today. Houston, Texas, Birmingham, England, in the UK, in the house. Chino, California is in the house. Locust Grove, uh, Dallas, Texas, San Bernardino, Jackson, Mississippi, Bessemer, Alabama. We declare all is well. College Park, passing old national right now. Yeah. Miami, in all over the UK, Decatur, Georgia, East Point, Chicago, Sacramento, South Africa is in the house. Kingston, Jamaica is in the house this morning. Locust Grove, we send blessings to you. San Diego, uh, Buckhead up there in, in Atlanta in the house this morning. Uh, praise God. I saw something with Lakeshore High School on it. God bless you. South, Amer South Africa, Johannesburg, you're in the house this morning. We declare you're blessed in Trinidad, Indianapolis, Cape Town, South Africa uh, is in the house this morning. East Point, Zambia is in the house. Praise God. Arkansas, we send blessings to you guys in Arkansas, all over Idaho, Abuja, Nigeria, Vicksburg, Mississippi in the house today. And we send blessings. Lawrenceville, Georgia. Uh, in the house today, Woodsbrid, Virginia, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, Valdosta, Georgia. We send blessings to go, those of you, St. Paul, South Carolina, all over Louisiana. We say you are blessed today. Uganda, we declare blessings in your life today. Yes, Union City, Georgia, India, 
in the house today. We declare you're blessed in Brooklyn, all over New York, world changes nation, all over this world, Richmond, Virginia. Uh, College Park seems to be showing up strong this morning. Saginaw, Michigan in the house today. Ellenwood, Georgia. Uh, the Bronx, Johannesburg, South Africa. We send blessings to you today. Fort Worth, Texas, all over Conyers. We say you guys are blessed today. Fort Lauderdale, Las Vegas, Memphis. Um, we say you are blessed today. Loma, uh, in, in the name, I think that's India in the house today. Philadelphia, Calhoun, uh, Burlington, New York, New, New Jersey. Uh, all over Decatur, Mississippi, we say you're blessed. Lubbock, Texas, we say you are blessed today. In Jesus' name, London, we declare you're blessed. Greensboro uh, in, in the house today, we declare your blessings. In Jesus' name, uh, those of you in the Netherlands, we say you're blessed this morning. And we declare the blessings this morning over here. Lorraine, Ohio. Uh, College Park in the house again. Praise God. We say you're blessed in Raleigh, North Carolina, Troy, Virginia, Cincinnati, Ohio. We say you guys are so blessed today, highly favored, and we just trust God. We trust God that anybody that comes on in this house today, that you're blessed, and we say you're blessed, and we declare that everything is going to be all right. Um, we welcome Spain in, in the house this morning. Uh, somebody said, why do you say in the house? Well, I mean, we're all literally uh, online, but we're, we're in the house. We're in my house this morning. We're in the house. And um, I welcome you today. Those of you in the Bahamas, I welcome all of you today. And I thank God for this amazing technology to have all my friends and partners members and associates uh, online today. Uh, I'm going to start something today. And I pray it doesn't get me in trouble, but I, I, I feel I need to at least start it. Several years ago, Taffy went to a meeting in Johannesburg, South Carolina, and she came home just changed change woman. I mean, she had a revelation on biblical equality that I got to be honest with you, it scared me. I mean, I'm just like, what in the world is she bringing back home? Because it went against everything that I had ever heard about relationships. It challenged me in every area. Um, you know, I, I, I was just amazed. Uh, I had to go and read Genesis all over again because I had uh, I had interpreted it from one perspective. You know, I had this thing, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have somebody to make me some flowers where all four sides look differently because it depends on the perspective that you're looking at that flower to determine what you see. One part, front part can be yellow. The sides can be uh, red. The other side can be pink. The other side can be blue. But wherever you're sitting and the view of that flower is going to show you what you see from your perspective. And I had to admit, I just was um, I was just uh, I was seeing biblical equality from I mean, well, I wasn't even seeing biblical equality. I was just seeing it from one perspective. And it was the perspective that, uh, you know, uh, most people grew up with. And then that's all we knew. Uh, so we're, we're gonna look at some things here and, and hopefully she'll be able to join me in, in, the, in the, um, in, in a couple of sessions, but you know, I'm, I'm going to challenge you today and the next day, and maybe, I don't know, it may take some time, but we're celebrating and getting prepared for this women's conference. And, um, I'm telling you, if you haven't registered, go ahead and get your tickets now. Um, don't hear us say, well, like I told y'all, ain't no more seats left. Go ahead and get it because it's going to be amazing. Okay. Amazing speakers. A lot of things that are going to happen here, but I, 
I believe that we all stand on equal grounds where Jesus is concerned. Uh, and I think all on equal ground where race is concerned, where uh, uh, man and woman's concerned, where where anything is concerned, um, you know, let me just mention this. Let me throw this at you. I grew up understanding male domination and male ruling. OK. And what I didn't realize is that male rule is a consequence of sin. It had happened in Genesis 316 as a result of the sin in the garden. Then male rule came in. Uh, and in this fallen world, this dominance is part of the sin, not by God's recommendation. <laughs> that dominance, male domination was a was a result of sin that happened in the garden. It is not a result of God recommendation. And Jesus came to end this male rule dominance. There it is. <laughs> and I can prove it to you. Jesus came to end this male rule dominance. Notice, you know, this whole thing about man ruling that happened after the sin took place in the garden. And as a result of sin, as the consequences of sin in Genesis 3.16, you can read that in NIV, Genesis 3.16, as a consequence of sin, male dominance entered in. And in a fallen world, this dominance is a part of the sin. It's not a part of a part of God's recommendation. And Jesus came. He says, I got to I'm going to work this out. Be patient. I'm on my way. I'm going to work this out. He came to end this male dominance. But when we think of it as the norm, when we think of male dominance as the norm and say this is how it should be, we are diminishing women who are created in God's image. Wow. Wow. And, and, and I've, seen, I've seen that all my life. I've seen that all of my life. It's, it's slander at its highest level highest place because verses later on god said i'm going to fix this i'm going to send a redeemer he said that I'll, I'll go over it in one of our sessions in genesis and just have you to re look at everything that you've saw from one perspective and didn't see the whole whole part of it jesus said i'm gonna send a redeemer a woman will bear a child and the, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit, man, this is I, I can't wait to get to all of this stuff. Uh, yeah. So I want to start off today. I know that was that was a strong that was a lot of strong stuff I just said. Uh, it is uh, it is something that we've got to talk about. And I feel like it's 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 how I fart when I first started teaching on the grace of God. How it, it sounded like it was contradicting everything that we heard, but I'm not trying to just, you know, make a be a problem to everybody. Uh I'm just saying we we got it, we gotta change this. This this whole idea of, you know, the man gets married, he he rules, he dominates, because our whole society is based on that. A whole society is based on that and women having to dumb themselves down in order to connect with a misinterpretation and a misunderstanding of the word of God and literally submitting themselves um, to uh, a male dominant society. Uh, yeah. So we, we got a lot to talk about, but the first thing I want to look at is in Galatians chapter three. And uh, just just look at this with me for a moment. Galatians chapter three. Uh, let's start at verse 24. He says, wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. OK, uh, that we might be justified by faith. 
But after that faith has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster or the law on well, the schoolmaster, for you are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now watch this. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you, male and female, are all one in Christ. For you, male and female, are all one in Christ. And so I believe that in Christ Jesus, we all stand in equality. We stand equal in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and your heirs according to the promise. And so when I look at that, I mean, how do I reconcile neither male nor female? And then he says, you, male and female, are all one in Christ. And then he started talking about uh, the races. Uh, no more Jew or Greek. Wow. You know, uh, there was one time uh, in our history, well, where a black man wasn't even considered to be a uh, a 100% man, <laughs> you know. Uh, but Jesus came so that even the races could stand on equal grounds. And and you can only stand on equal ground in Christ Jesus. Onesimus, who was the slave of uh, Philemon, had run away and had been spending time with Paul. Paul loved this guy and wrote a letter to Philemon, letting him know that Onesimus, uh, his former slave who ran away, is with him and he's sending him back. And he told Philemon, don't receive him as a slave anymore receive him as a brother because now in Christ we stand on equal ground and I don't know if that's been preached enough or has it been heard enough or maybe we're just too scared to talk about it because we don't want the back backlash we don't want about it counseling counseling us whatever dude I mean our job is to preach the gospel and to preach the truth of that gospel and to preach it, you know, what I'm learning is with sweet lips so people can at least think about it enough for the Holy Spirit to to come and convince them on some things. And uh, I think it'll I think it'll be a blessing. Now, I'm going I'm to uh, look over some notes here and um, I'll, I'll get deeper with it. Uh, but there are a lot of things you have to reconcile. You know, and ask yourself a question. If women are supposed to be so below the bar, then why is it that in the Bible you have two books named after women? The book of Esther and the book of Ruth. Well, and I'm sure somebody will come up with a, a reason for that. Uh, Genesis 2.18 uh, I'll read that so you'll get an idea of where I'm coming from here. Genesis chapter two and, uh, and verse 18. Now, like I said, I'm, I'm just throwing some stuff at you today for you to consider. He said, and the Lord God said, it is not good. It's not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help. I'm now, now, now underline that I'm going to make him help. He says, it's not good. That man should be alone. So the only not good in a perfect world is Adam's aloneness. The only not good in a perfect world was Adam's aloneness. Wow. He needed a helper. Now, here's the, the Hebrew word here that I'm going to refer to a lot. Uh, he needed an ezer. E-Z-E-R, a helper, a, a, specific, a, 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 a special type of helper, an ezer. Uh, Adam, uh, and that's what I mean when I say helper, an ezer. 
Adam cannot complete assignments in the garden without an Ezer. Everything in the garden is perfect. And Adam cannot complete the assignment in the garden without an Ezer. And Ezer, Ezer in the Hebrew, it means a strong rescuer. A strong rescuer. A strong rescuer. Now, you know, I know who I, I know I'm gonna have people in here that are just gonna do everything they can to just maintain the traditional way of thinking. And I can't do anything about that. I mean, you I can't change I can't change your heart, I can't change your mind. Jesus can. All I can do is just show you just what's right there. Sometimes you can just take people and just read the scripture right there, and they still say, No, 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 I ain't changing nothing. I ain't doing nothing and I can't I can't help you. I mean, log off. Uh, I can't I can't do nothing for you. But if you're if you're want to dig into the word and challenge the traditional way of thinking to make sure you got it right. OK, because I guarantee you, um, you know, a lot of women ain't going to be standing around letting you, you know, mistreat them and treat them with no value and and beat them up and make them do stuff. That, that ain't that you 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 it's. it's and then some women will will just kind of, you know, well, I, I don't want to change either. You know, I'm just going. So listen to what I'm saying now. And you can get your books out and check it for yourself. Ezer is the Hebrew word that's used here. Um, and Adam cannot complete an assignment in the garden without an Ezer. Ezer is a strong rescuer. So he made a woman to be a strong rescuer. Now, this word Ezer comes from two Hebrew root words. It means to be strong. It means to be strong and it means to rescue. That word Ezer means to be strong and it means to rescue. Ezer is used most often for God's rescue of Israel. He used that same Hebrew word when he was referring to his rescue of Israel. Look at Psalms. I want to show you that. And, and, and all, I, all I know to do is to show you what the word has to say. And uh, then you got to decide what you're going to do with it. Are you just going to look at the flower from your perspective and not see exactly what the word is saying here? Look at uh, Psalms 121 verses 1 through 2. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. I lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help, Ezer. My help, Ezer, comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Wow. Look at that again. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my Ezer. My Ezer cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. So women are not, are not, um, Ah, uh, women are not more defined as men, but in order to complete the work, the two of them had to work together. In order to get the job done in the garden, the two of them had to work together. So this might be the reason for unethical things that arise and might be the reason for productivity going down in your life or in our communities is because we refuse to have an Ezer. We refuse to have the involvement of a woman. We refuse to have a strong rescuer. We refuse to have uh, an Ezer involved in what's going on. And so we see unethical things because men don't feel like they need a woman's involvement. Or we see productivity going down because you don't feel like this is a, a woman need to be involved. This is a man's world. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. My life is sure a whole lot better because I've discovered my need for an Ezra. Hallelujah. I discovered my need for an Ezer. Praise God. Yeah, Paul wasn't married, but he was surrounded by a bunch of women in ministry. Okay. 
And so, again, quit making excuses for holding on. What you, if you want to hold on to it, that's fine. We can still be friends, but I'm going to still preach it. You, you can ho hold on to your traditional way. The Holy Spirit will help you out. But, you know, it, it's it's plain in the it's plain in the Bible. Ezers are needed at the leadership table in every field of work. What would what would happen in our nation if men would realize that whatever they've been called to do, make sure you don't do it without an Ezer? What would happen if we would recognize our need for an Ezer in our life? I tell you, everything works better in my life. Everything works better in my ministry. Everything works great. Because I see and have seen the necessity and the vitalness of Taffy Dollar as my Ezer in my life. Amen. Uh, I don't believe women were created to be a subordinate, but a help, an Ezer, an Ezer in every business. Your moral rescue is needed in science and medicine and law. Without Ezers, the projects don't go as well. My goodness. Not because, you know, of your hunger for power or position. I'm not talking about women who are just hungry for power or position. I'm talking about men who recognize that Whatever God called him to, he also meant for them to go in with an Ezer. Uh, I'm not just talking about marriage relationships. I'm talking about, you know, if you have a business, have a woman on the staff, have a woman at the table, have an Ezer there. I'm not just talking about husband and wife. I'm talking about in every area, man. Um, Adam's. Uh, let's say Adam, when Adam was asleep and God put him to sleep and, uh, and she's taken out of his side, what really was happening. He, he takes the DNA from the man, the first human words celebrating their oneness and unity for moral decision-making. Uh, think about it. Look at the first words that came out. This man recognized bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, same DNA. And is there. Now, I'm going to let you think about that. We got two minutes, two minutes left. And then we're going to go over all of the stuff, you know, that uh, some of the stuff that I mentioned today in detail. We're going to look at stuff like. Um, the word headship and and uh how we just forgot about all that because you know our foundation at the beginning was all messed up because we looked at genesis after the curse and concluded that male domination was the perfect will of god for our life and it wasn't and dude i'm a male saying this <laughs> okay i'm a male saying this I'm a, I'm someone who 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 lived through this. I was one of those who I thoroughly believed in male domination and a woman should just submit and do what I tell her to do. And my life was nowhere near as good as it is now that I have come to recognize that Jesus showed up to correct that. OK, and uh, I'm glad that I have an answer. Now, you do what you want to do. Do what you want to do, bro. But. I'm going to keep an Ezer with me in everything I do. An Ezer's on my staff, Ezer's in departments, Ezer's in my church, Ezer's on my pool pit. I don't care what nobody say. Do, do you. You do you. And I'm going to do me. And uh, I believe that the woman is anointed. She's a rescuer, rescuer. And if you will give a seat at the table, and reevaluate your male dominance. I mean, sexism is the same wickedness of racism. All of the isms, uh, you know, uh, a, a black man is is important to um, to to operate 
in, in a system. But but so is a woman. Now I'm not I'm not talking about you know that other type of women liberation thing. I'm talking about what the Bible says. And I mean to tell you a lot of things would get done in this earth if we recognize that our need, our need as men for Ezers in our life. So there you have it. Y'all go for it. You can, you know, get in there and let God talk to you about it. I mean, you know, you, you, well, I won't have nothing to do with you no more. Reverend. Yeah, yeah, you know, bro, come on, man. Come on. You know, you just finished talking about love, man. Come on. Come on. Come on, bro. Come on, beautiful people. <laughs> come on. Let this, let this marinate on the inside of you and let God be God. Amen. Well, I love y'all so, so much. That's why I'm teaching this. I mean, I can't can't go another week or day without teaching this. So uh, put the information up on the screen. We we are we are celebrating women all over the world this upcoming uh, year, 2024. And uh, uh, we are going to have. Uh, Taffy Dollar presents the Radical Women's Conference, and it's time for women to bloom. Amen. To bloom. March the 14th through the 15th. Now, I need y'all to go ahead so you don't have to hear me talk about this all the time. Just go ahead and register right now. Get your tickets right now. Don't even take no chance of, of you calling one day and they say, well, we all sold out. Don't do that. Let's let's do this thing now. We got a ticket this event because we can't afford to have people showing up. We, they can't get in. So if you want to go ahead and register today, settle all that, you know, make a make a make a, a wonderful trip out of it. Call your friends, ladies, and y'all come in together. Get your hats on. I'm sure Taffy got some stuff planned, man. Text radical to five one five five five. Or you can visit taffydollar.org. Or you can call 1-866-477-7683. Those of you who are on StreamYard, there's a QR code there. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Taffy might let me say two, three words, but I'm, 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 high, I'm high on the hog on this teaching here. And I just believe that the best is yet to come. So, uh, my jobs, I'm going to let all the men know and they might get mad at it or have some kind of insecure. I don't think a woman ought to have to dumb herself down. You know, I, I just, you know, I, you know, we, we got to talk about all perspectives of that. Remember the, the yellow part of the flower, the pink part of the flower, blue part. You got to look, you got to turn that flower around and check out all the perspectives. But I'm talking about the one perspective that we hardly ever look at and hardly ever pay attention to and uh, putting this thing in a place where you can really, really look at it. So I'm telling you, my life is good, man. My, my wife treats me with such honor and love and respect. And uh, my job is to make sure she has days of heaven on the earth. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It works if you understand it. And I ain't, I ain't doing nothing else in this life while I am alive. Without my Ezra. I have discovered my Ezra and I'm going to keep it right there with me. Praise God. I can advise you to do the same thing, but you know, you're going to do what you want to do. That's what I found out during the, the uh, what was that COVID? People do what they want to do. <laughs> you know, I'm just playing around. Don't get offended. I'm just, just playing around. Anyway, I love you guys so much. That's the only reason I teach stuff like this is because I love you. I want you to at least think about it. Don't get mad at me, man. Just, Go get the Bible and, you know, start, start, start picking up the word and, and just, Lord, help me to see what I can't see. Help me to understand what I don't understand and go at it. And if, you know, you're not convinced, I, hey, I, we still love it. If I, if I taught you a thousand things that you could do good with, don't leave me because of one, you know, and uh, we're mature enough to, uh, you know, disagree agreeably. But I'm just trying to show you what's in the word, but I'm trying to tell you what I know. I'm, I'm trying to tell you what I know. So anyway, I will see you guys. Let's see. Uh, tomorrow's Wednesday. So we're going to be in the pulpits and then we'll we'll pick up on Thursday and Friday. And, uh, 
and uh, God bless you. I love you guys so much. Have an amazing day today. Uh, all is well. Amen. Bye-bye, everybody.